morning, everyone. Welcome at the Yellow House. Very welcome. Um, we're super excited that you're all here um, for this event in the early morning. Um, it's been a while for me, at least. I've been to a morning event, so you're all troopers, I would say. Um, so thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm super excited um, to host uh, and moderate this panel. Um, there's some more coffee being made. Um, I'm Susanne. I'm the um, uh, senior art and photo editor at We Present. We Present is We Transfer's um, editorial and um, editorial platform where we support artists and uh, talk about their work um, and really uh, go on a journey with them and making kind of realizing their their projects together and publishing it. Um, we're here today um, for stuff they don't tell you. Um, this is a series we've been pu publishing for a couple of years now on the website, um, which talks about, you know, all the tricky things creatives run into when they start their career or when they're midway their career and all the stuff people basically haven't told them before uh, in school or, you know, just how, how do you go about having a career in the creative industry? That's what this series is all about. And we're really excited to have a live event now here in Amsterdam. Um, and we've got a brilliant panel to talk about the topic of today, which is how to pitch your work. Um, so we will have a little discussion and afterwards there will also be some room for questions. So if, you, if there's anything that um, hasn't been discussed, please raise your hand. Um, it can be a really open floor, so feel free. Um, so yeah, the panel. Um, I'm really excited to introduce you to um, Monique Hendricks. And she is a contemporary art curator. She curates for Frans Hals Museum. She curates at Lima. She also writes. Um, and what's really interesting about her is that she's also an advisor at the Mondrian Fonds. So she reviews a lot of pitches um, and a lot of uh, creative work. Uh, so she will be able to tell you all about the ins and outs and what not to do when you're applying for um, for a fund, basically. So welcome to Monique. Please give her a hand. <laughs> then I'm moving on to the middle of the couch. Uh, we have Emme Kine. She's editor in chief at Volkskrant magazine. Um, that's the Saturday supplement of the of the Volkskrant, uh, the Dutch newspaper. I think everyone should be would be familiar. Should be, sorry, yeah, should be. Um, basically, um, you can imagine as editor-in-chief, um, she gets loads of emails, requests, questions. Can you publish my work? Um, whether it's journalists, illustrators, um, photographers, basically everyone comes knocking at her door. So she will give you a lot of insight in yeah, how to get your work published in something like the Saturday supplement of... The Volkskrant. Welcome to MA. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have Gijs Determeijer. He's exe executive, sorry, really tricky word for me, executive producer and partner at Halal, um, which is a production and photography agency um, in Amsterdam. They, I just heard they also have an office in Berlin and looking for great people to run in. Um, <laughs> he is basically, um, yeah, as a producer, he's responsible for connecting the right directors and creatives uh, to the right client. Um, they, um, yeah, they have to pitch loads of um, decks to clients and, and, and figuring out who would be the best person to do the job and then also coming up with a creative. Um, he has given me some insight in what goes into that whole process, and I think it's really interesting, and he will uh, tell you all about it today. Um, so yeah, give it up for uh, Gijs. Um, and yeah, I kind of wanted to start with you, Amy, because 
<laughs> I was wondering because I just mentioned like you probably get loads of emails and stuff. I was actually wondering in a week how much requests would you normally get? Yeah, I was thinking about that too. And then I thought, would it be four or five a day, I think? So, but uh, I get different pitches. So I don't know uh, It's it's uh, if I... Because it's also free, a lot of freelancers who want to... Um, yeah, publish something in Photo Magazine, but also PR agents for uh, writers, directors, products. So if I if I uh, uh, take it all, it would be probably more than five a day, maybe. I don't know, I was away for three weeks on holiday, and for the first time I decided not to delete my emails. I just, <laughs> I usually do that. You usually I, delete yeah. all your emails? I had five, <laughs> 1,500, I think, oh when I came God. up. And I mean, it's a lot of, I mean, I also uh, buy stuff online. I mean, it's a lot of uh, advertising <laughs> as well, I'm telling you. Yeah. But but there were, I mean, I, I had to go through all of it because there were, I had an out of office, but there's still, there's, yeah, there's a lot, uh, it's a lot. It's yeah. Really it's a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how many of those do you actually think end up in the magazine? Yeah. Not to uh, discourage all of you, but not so many. It, um, because the thing is, we also, we have a lot of, I mean, we have, it's a big newspaper, so we have a lot of people who, uh, yeah, work for us on a daily basis. And for me, it's really, because we don't have a lot of time, I have a really small uh, group of people that I work with. So for me, it's it's actually a risk to work with somebody that I really don't know uh, anything about. So what you really need to do is convince me in an email um, that you have a great idea, you're a great writer, you're a nice person, <laughs> yeah, you can work with feedback and do all that in an email, That's it, it's hard. So, uh, but in numbers, I don't, yeah, that's not really easy to say, but it, it happens because if, I mean, that's what I, to encourage you, it, uh, for a good idea, there's always uh, space, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. always looking for things that we didn't uh, come up with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And now we're here today to kind of figure out like what is a good idea and what should like a pitch entail. Um, are there, do you have any like examples of pitches that you got in your, I don't know, in your mailbox or someone just told you and you thought like, okay, yeah, let's do it yeah. immediately. Uh, I do. And in general, mm, I mean, there are some things that it's. I think would be not. It's it's uh, uh, interesting to know that it's for me. It's uh, important that a pitch is not very long. I mean, it's different for. I, I talked to Gijs earlier, but yeah. for me, because it, uh, if a good piece in our magazine, you should be able to um, understand in a sentence what it is about, and then it it's also. Uh, the Volkswagen magazine is about personal stories, basically. So it has to be something that is about living, uh, how to live your life. or, And then it has to be something that we didn't come up with ourselves. So it, it's great if it's really unique. And to give an example, I, already, I, I have one story that I'm really proud of. And it's really funny because the writer of the article is in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Jantine Jungeblut... Uh, Wrote an, I think she wrote an email, or maybe I talked to her, I don't really remember, but she um, wrote an article about the fact that when she was, I can tell this, right? Yeah, when she was 16, um, uh, basically the first sentence of the article was, when I was 16, nude pictures of me were spread around my high school. And that's, I mean, something that I'm like, what? <laughs> and mm -hmm. that really works. And then um, the second important part of a pitch is explain to me what's what the method or what 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 you what kind of article am i going to expect and she was going to find the people who did that the guys who because they, this the pictures were online in their high school but also online so she was going back to the the people who did the stuff at school but also she she tried to find um the people who spread the pictures on the internet. So it was really sort of an exciting pitch, but also really important. So that's the third part of this brilliant, brilliant pitch to me, because it's something um, 
I don't know if that's the right word, but kind of sensational pitch. But then at the same time, it's really about important important topics, uh, online abuse, sexting. Uh, I don't know how young people live their lives, and 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 that combination to me um, was a perfect pitch. Yeah, that's. And now stop talking. <laughs> no, no, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll I'll take it to the to the rest. Um, I yeah, I think that's that's so. If if I understand it correctly, it has to be something like the first sentence almost grabs you immediately, but there's like another layer to it that has a bigger story and it's not only sensational. Exactly. Yeah. And and for me, to add something, it's nice if you write an email and I, how can I say this? If I read it, I'm like, okay, this, this person can write because that's mm -hmm. really important for me. That's also really well written. Mm -hmm. And you can do that, I think, all of that in one mail because, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that's what really works for, yeah. uh, for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's also interesting, right? Because I've spoken to Gijs and like you're saying in one email, we're all good. Like if, if you can be succinct and, and clearly explain what you're going to do, I'm happy. Gijs, can you tell me about how the pitching process happens at Halal? Um yeah where where do i start uh so first of all we do a lot of different things so this is not like how you pitch a documentary or a feature film or maybe a, a photo reportage to you um but I'm, i want to speak specifically about uh, pitching commercials uh so maybe i should explain shortly how how that works so uh, a brand wants to make a campaign, they go to an advertising agency, the advertising agency comes up with a strategy and uh, hopefully uh, a script, and then they want to find a director to um, execute the, uh, the script. And that's usually they go to three parties, so either they have three directors in mind or they have three production companies in mind. Um, and that's where the, the the battle begins between the three directors. And um, yeah, this this phase, so this pitching phase has uh, gotten completely out of control in the last uh, 10 years. So before 10 years ago, I think creatives usually had a favorite director that they maybe already worked with and they were really curious to see what this director would do with their idea. And right now, clients and advertising agencies are very used to basically getting a really big deck to uh, in which the director already has to express his or her ideas. Um, and... And what, what kind yeah. of elements does that type of deck have? Um, yeah, so, so back in the days, it, it, it could have been uh, uh, just a meeting or a call or like, mm -hmm. how would you approach this? And now uh, you, you kind of have to, um, yeah, and I mean, it's, it's basically also our own fault because, you know, if you know there are free people and you can wow the creatives already, uh, before <laughs> you know in the earlier stage then you you basically can already pull the, the job towards you so it started just maybe one page like okay how would i do this and look at my portfolio what i did before uh then it became i brought a couple of examples so a couple of years ago it started with you know like making uh little books and then this is about football so you would make it look like a football fan magazine or something and then oh the, the the creators would be like oh my god it's a it's a it's a whole book you know and and then that was really cute now it's then it became pdfs and yeah i have something on my computer that i can share with you later but there's not a screen but now uh you you basically already make a whole deck that animates in which you show the transitions uh references uh you know it needs to be you know 50 pages basically that's crazy how yeah. many hours does one deck take so uh i think oh yeah so this is the other thing and this is not to discourage you but there are basically <laughs> no directors anymore that can do this by themselves so most directors are 
they get help. So you get, if you're a director that can't write well, then uh, either your EP, like me or other EPs at Halal might help you with that, or or you get a ghost writer, basically uh, other people that get an image researcher, you get a designer. Uh, if you're really lucky, uh, you find a gem like I have. I'm, she's here. <laughs> I'm not going to say her name because then, uh, no, it's Yin Chel. <laughs> <laughs> but you can steal her. Um, so if you if you if you find somebody that is really really good, and then but that person basically makes these treatments every day with directors. Uh, so if you're a director that does this once a month or once every two months, and you're up against uh, other directors that have this entire team, uh, it's it's really complicated. And but if you if you if you don't put the team to it, you're not gonna you're probably not going to win it in that first phase because they're going to be like, mm, oh, this director only wrote two pages and this director wrote 40 pages, you know? Mm -hmm. But clients have the time to go through all of... I mean, it's not really efficient. So it doesn't really sound no, efficient to I, me. No, I, I totally agree. But you but you, you also have to see like in the process, so creatives maybe already thought about this concept for six months or something, went back and forth the client this is also really weird. They have one phone call or a meeting or a Zoom call with a director one hour and then they explain their concept and then the director is basically sent home and has to return in five days with this deck. And then the creatives might say, wow, this director really didn't get it. And you're like, didn't get it. And it's so yeah, sad. No, it, 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 it's really sad. So... <laughs> yeah what what can i say about it uh so but 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 those creators they have time to read those three decks and the client is maybe spending you know five hundred thousand or a million on this campaign they're gonna have time to look at that deck uh too they oh, want a great industry <laughs> yeah everybody wants uh security you know you don't nobody wants to take really take the risk when it's about uh you know, let's say it's a car commercial or a jeans commercial, whatever, and you're going to buy a lot of media and and then you don't want to be surprised by what a director is is going to do. And it, no, it's 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 very sad. Um. <laughs> do you still get to because it to me it kind of sounds like you're working in this like specific like it's a very specific way of working. Do you feel you still get to kind of like go wild and be like okay, I'm going to pitch this director. No one would have expected me to. Yeah, so this is where the tips uh, come in. Yes. <laughs> so there are always three directors in a, in a pitch uh, in, in the Netherlands. In some countries, Germany, they might even have five people in the pitch, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> three people. So you have, to dis you have to analyze which director you are. Are you the favorite the 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 you know the the sort of sure shot the uh are you the the second best or are you the the dark horse uh so if you don't know what a the dark wild horse card. is <laughs> yeah the wild card so if you're the wild card okay let's say if you're not if you if you if you you already did a campaign with them for that brand so you did it really well that means that you can kind of color maybe a little bit more in the lines and you can also turn in a budget that might be a little bit higher than the budget that they set. If you're the competitor and you're going to be, you know, maybe not, you know, you're good, but but um, if, if you're going to turn in something, for instance, that is more expensive, like why would they then pick you? Uh, because they already have this other person they worked with before and, you know, did a really good job and why would they take the risk? But if you're that third one, that's the, that's the perfect one. It's because basically you can go completely crazy, you know, you can turn in a really weird treatment uh, or with a really weird budget because if they fall in love with it, you know, like then they might pick you and that's 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 an ideal situation basically. Do you have an example of one of those dark horses? Um, 
Now, so sometimes you win, sometimes you win a pitch by really coloring in the lines, and that's and that's that sounds super boring. Uh, but if they if they kind of you have the feeling that the pitch is written for you, like then you're not going to reinvent the wheel because, like I said before, they might already have thought about this campaign for six months before that. Um, but if you're that dark horse, like then show your personality, you know, like show what you would do with this campaign, even though, you know, you're probably not going to win this pitch, then at least give them uh, a little glimpse into your crazy brain. And, and who knows, you know, like maybe the, the owner of the company uh, of the actual brand, like sees your pitch and thinks like, whoa, I don't know what these creatives came up with, but... I like what that girl wants to do with it, you know? Uh, so uh, I've been in all these <laughs> positions. And when you start, because I, I think like we're also like, this is a little bit to give some tips. When you start, you're usually the third one. And you really have to realize that. So either you, another thing you can do is color within the lines and under bid is also... You know, like if you if you turn in something which is which looks cool but would only cost the client half of the money, that's also a way to win pitches, of course. You know, like mm -hmm. so. Okay, so either cut your budget or go wild. Basically, that's that's or both. Uh, that or yeah, both or both. Yeah, <laughs> but to to turn something in like this is what we get a lot. You know, like uh, oh hello oh, you guys are always the most expensive ones or something. That's not really a good position unless you have something that they really want or can live without, you know. But it's also quite hard for an advertising agency to go back to a client like, yeah, we need 100,000 extra. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes I have sense. one more small tip and creatives will always say to you, uh, we're here, you can reach out to us, uh, we can sort of... So let's say you have five days. If you want to do a check-in after three days, most directors don't do this. I, I never understand. Like, go, do it, you know? Like, test your your sketch, your, your first idea, because they want to get involved. It also shows that you want to collaborate with the creatives on, on their idea, that you're not going to go solo. Um, uh, uh, so to try to do that that check in and then really listen to what they say you know if they say oh you're going oh you're you're way too wild then maybe tone it down if they're like you know say go wilder go wilder you know mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense yeah i think i think that's an interesting point is like having a conversation with whoever you're going to work with but i think in the case of mondrian fonts for instance that's not at all possible, right? Do you ever have conversations with the creatives that kind of put in a um, request? Um, well, I think the Mondrian Fund has um, like a walk-in hour. Okay. Um, if, if you have very specific questions about the fund, you can also uh, tap on the shoulder of Betty, who is here uh, on behalf of the fund. Um, but yeah, you can, you, and you can al always call if you're unsure, um, if you're fitting for one of the, the funding um, you can always reach out and check. Um, but when you do apply, uh, we never have a conversation. Like the the applications come in um, and then someone from the fund reaches out to, to the advisors, uh, which I am one of them. Um, and then we review them so we don't con we don't have a conversation with the with the artists. Mm -hmm. And how because when you apply, how there's loads of steps you need to follow, right? If so, like, is there a possibility of being like a, a wild card, like in Gijs's case? Like, can you just like throw in a really random idea that maybe doesn't fit in the whole application process? Or would that be something that could, is kind of like, do you have to follow the guidelines basically? Um, well, there's specific guidelines as of uh, what you should put in. So like a CV, resume, uh, visual portfolio, um, uh, and the funding, like a project plan. Um, but you can go as wild as you want within these boundaries of these documents, mm -hmm. yeah. I think. Yeah, and I think you also should. Um, for me, I always look... 
um, at the visual portfolio first. So before I read anything or look at the CV, like um, it's, yeah, it's really important to document the work that you make um, like individually, but also if you have exhibitions in an exhibition setting, if you make video or do performance, also um, send in videos because it's really important to see as well. So, so when reviewing for a new project, does does that does that mean that you're actually looking at the past work as well? Um, yeah, that also plays a big role, like the um, um, CV, um, like the the places you have been exhibiting, or um, the fact that you set up things yourself, uh, like a collective, or or um, yeah, making exhibitions yourself is a big plus for me because it proves a lot of um, like uh, active. Um, attitude within this industry mm -hmm. and do you feel because sometimes what I've heard from creatives is like I'm being like funded or commissioned for the same thing all over again is are there is there ways for someone to kind of stand out or like move away from what they've done before and I think that's more a question for everyone like how important is the past work and how important like, do does the creative um, have to follow what they've been doing, or can they do something else as well? For me personally, um, I really love um, to see people taking new direction, um, like seeing development in someone's work, uh, or um, people, yeah, um, like learning new techniques um, that fit into their practice. So for me, it's a big plus. Amy. Yeah, it's a hard question because I think it's a combination of things because um, and now it sounds like I'm always trying to work as efficiently as possible but I guess <laughs> that's true because yeah. so if I'm checking um, those kind of mails it really helps um, uh, of course if you have examples of earlier work if they can say oh I published in NRC Handelsblad or Linda that that does something for me because I'm like okay uh, uh, you're not new, but on the other hand, it it it, it always uh, comes back to the idea. So somebody who just uh, graduated from I don't know what, or, or or has never been a journalist before, but has a really good story. I mean, I'm talking about written uh, articles yep. all the time mm -hmm. because that's my main uh, thing, I guess. But it's it it it, it works for the, for the same in the same way for photographers, I guess. And um, uh, it, uh, the idea is so important to me. I think maybe more important than um, your experience before. I think that's I really would... encouraging, right? No, that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do here. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> always need ideas. Idea, making up ideas is so, I would say, fucking hard, really hard. So, yeah, I mean, have to have special ideas, and, and that's what we're looking for, because we really try to, um, yeah, to stand out in this really big... Uh, media environment so it, that's what we're always looking for yeah so mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense Gijs? um i i really believe so in the commercial uh world people are, are usually going to ask you for something you've already done but then apply to their brand i mean of course there are brands out there that really want to try something new uh, now I really have to think okay. hard. <laughs> no, but I mean, of, co of course, there are, there are those there are those brands, and there are, there are brands that think like, okay, what if we give this basically video artist a million euros? Like, what will will this person do? But it, that's really really rare. You what you need to do is you make need to make exceptional work that is personal to you in your free work. So in your music videos, short films or also in photography, just your personal work. And then like, and then um, a brand will, uh, or, or an, an people at an advertising agency will see that and think like, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. So, um, I mean, it is changing a little bit, but for instance, if you've never done anything, anything with a car in it, then it's very, it used to be impossible to ever do a car commercial. Now, that's changing. So people are like, uh, okay, if you have a really great fashion portfolio 
and will hook you up with a, a car DP uh, camera person. Then that could also be become cool or something, you know. But but that's but that's really sort of more n- new. I think you should make something edgy for me, and then make not a lot of money with it, and then go to you, and then go to the big companies. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think yeah. I I that that makes total sense. So it's kind of like if you wanna change what you are being commissioned for you need to innovate in your personal work and show that in your portfolio is that is that kind of right oh yeah agreement? i would also agree yeah perfect that's great um and then in terms of because you said you have applied for funds um yourself you've helped people apply for funds and now you're in the reviewing thing so we're here with an expert basically and I'm, I'm just wondering if there's any advice you can give people in terms of the language they should use or um how yeah how finished a project should be when you apply or um should it should it be just an a seed of an idea or should it be something bigger already anything you can um, advise on well, what I would advise people to do is before you hand in a project plan, um, first pitch it to um, one of your family members, like um, your mom, dad, or anyone else um, who maybe doesn't know everything uh, about your practice or or the art world or whatever, um, and then uh, ask them to tell you afterwards. Um, like your plan again, so repeat it. Um, and if it's clear, you're doing a good job. And if it's not, um, you should consider um, making a bit more sharper. So um, yeah, I think if you're clear, if the, the plan comes across clear, that's the, the best thing that could happen. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So no lofty phrases. Um, no, um, but I mean, you can um, already think about a lot of other things, um, like it shouldn't be uh, an end result already, but um, if you are applying for research, for example, um, yeah, you should know what the question would be, uh, what people you want to interview, or what books you want to read. Um, like You shouldn't know the, the outcome yet, of course, uh, but you should know uh, the direction to take. No. Yeah, that makes sense. And then in terms of, um, I'm I'm wondering because like you all deal with either rejecting work or being rejected for for kind of a pitch you've done. Um, how what what would you say in terms of like if you don't hear back, if someone doesn't hear back from you, Amy, what does that mean? Um, yeah, let's start with that. But, yeah, actually, I really, really, really try to never, ever, uh, don't. Uh, I, I always wanted to reply. Actually, I, yeah. I, or, or, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and just I, make sure that she's not on vacation. <laughs> yeah. or that she I answered your all email. those emails. <laughs> I did. I took two days, but I t- no, because <laughs> I think it's really important, and I don't really always have the time to, uh, you know, write a really big email with all my. Uh, uh, all thoughts. my thoughts on on on, on why uh, it, it's not for for me. So so so, and it depends on, um, I don't know if it's a, a PR agent. I mean, I, I just say no, not this time or something, and that's fine. But if it's somebody who wrote a really personal story about something, and I'm not gonna use it, then I'm really always uh, answer back, and I try to explain um, uh, why it's it's not now and I always say oh you might go to bottle or something because I try to I really try to to help people um because I think that's really important and uh yeah Is that's that an answer to yeah you? I yeah. think that's that's actually really nice that you're encouraging people to and to say like maybe you can try this newspaper or try this place because that would be a better fit yeah, and it's actually really helpful for my, for my own work because it I sort of force myself to really think about, okay, is this for me? And if not, why not? 
because that really helps me to think about what I'm making and, and why and how that works. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think th yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, and it's hard work. It's hard to actually. So I'm really happy that I have colleagues because sometimes you're like, yeah, is this something? And and if not, why not? It's it's hard sometimes to to uh, to find words for that, but we really mm -hmm. try because that's so important. Yeah. yeah. And would you uh, recommend um, someone to come back to you even though you rejected yes, one of their pitches for before? For sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. It's always that's what I always end up. So maybe next time, and I really mean that because yeah, you should keep trying and. Sometimes, I don't know, five times or six times, but the seventh idea could be perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I have one s small thing I really wanted to say because yeah. um, what I think is really important if you uh, reach out to me and it, there are a lot of people who sort of do this open application and that really does not really work for me. And then it ends up with let's have coffee and I do love coffee, but if I would... <laughs> I mean, it would be a full-time job for me if I drink coffee with everybody who proposes uh, that to me. So come up with an idea and something you want to discuss. That's, I mean, even if you're a photographer, of course, uh, at your portfolio, I'm going to look at it. But tell me what you want to do with it or what what's your uh, passion or, I don't know, I hate the word, but oh, what's really important to you? Because it makes it much easier for me to understand what you're... Um, yeah, what you're bringing uh, for yeah. us. Yeah. So. so no, here's a link to my website. Check it out, please. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and in terms because you give feedback, do you get feedback from a client if they say like, no, this is not for us? Um. um so so this really differs, and there there are people that are are really good at this, and some people are really horrible. So. So, so that pitching phase that we were just talking about, so that's all unpaid in, in my industry always, right? So uh, people get paid, the, the designer and the re image researcher and the ghostwriter and the, um, no, yeah, they're, they're all getting paid. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I pay them, but I don't, I don't get paid for it. Uh, mm -hmm. and the director also doesn't get paid for it. Um, so... Uh, so to be refused with a, 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 a WhatsApp message uh, is is super painful, of course. So what I do when that happens, uh, I, I I say to the the agency producer, whoever does that, like, uh, uh, yeah, this this is not good enough, you know. Like this person spent five days on it, so have your creatives. Uh, ask your creators to write why uh, this person didn't get it so that they can learn something uh, from it. And then they say, yeah, yeah, we will. And then usually they don't, but some people do. Some people even uh, plan in a Zoom call and, and then you're like, but basically to turn you down and that's also painful. And then a lot of directors don't want that, but actually mm -hmm. that is really what you should ask for. Like, why, why did I not get the job? Because yeah, then, you know, maybe... They would say you were the agency favorite, but the client thought you were too edgy or uh, we picked this, uh, the dark horse, because uh, this one person went crazy and uh, we just fell in love with it, you know, like, and then you, you learn something from it. And one more thing, because I have directors all the time that basically say, I never want to pitch again and fuck <laughs> this shit and I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> ever gonna do it again and if people want to work with me they should just know that i'm amazing and then they should just want to work with me and it's like yeah i agree but then there are really directors that lose literally like i know one director that lost like 24 pitches in a row last year but still this director is one of the top directors on the on top now like this this just happens you know it's a it's a numbers game it's one you're one out of three or one out of five in germany <laughs> um so uh you you're 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 you you know you have a chance of one out of three and and that can also go wrong 24 times mm -hmm. and it can also go right 17 times in a row and uh um yeah, yeah. that's 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 just life I, and, and one one more thing like so if you're a director and you can't write and you can't speak or you can't uh Pitch. do this thing, but <laughs> Probably you can make films. So do like uh, 
make a really crap version of what you want to do with your iPhone, with your, uh, well, you can also do it with your parents or uh, family members or whatever, but just just make that 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 film or show that transition like, okay, and we go into a garbage can and then we come out of an exhaust pipe of a car and you just do it with your iPhone and you film yourself doing it and then creators are going to be like, ah, that's what we want because we're asking this guy or girl to uh, turn our ideas into a film. So if that's something that you can do, which I hope is when you're a director, then do it, you know, and they, mm. then they, they will probably fall in love with that. Yeah. Use the medium that you're most comfortable with, basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to open it up uh, to the floor. So if there's any questions, I see someone in front. <laughs> Hello, good, mor oh, good morning. Uh, I have a question for you, Gijs. Uh, uh, so I run a creative agency as well, and like we do pitches, we also lose, we sometimes win. Um, but what would you advise clients to like uh, make the pitching environment more healthier? Um, I honestly think that clients are not aware of this uh, uh, um, of this, uh, basically, I think that an agency will say to a client, "You can choose." You know, we ask these three great directors to to make this interpretation. So, uh, I don't think the clients know that the directors and the production companies are doing it for free, for instance. Or I'm, I don't think they're really aware of that, or that people spend forty hours on it. So, yeah, if you're, I mean, there is nothing as empowering to say to a director we want to do this job with you and you don't have to pitch for it but we just have to you know that's that's amazing on the so so uh yeah i would say to agencies and clients like sometimes maybe don't do that you know they're really great examples of uh castle scammer never used to do it uh don never used to do it they, they would just say to a client we we know which director is the best for your idea and we're going to do it with this person. It's also a little bit limiting, of course, because how do new people get in? Um, and and there is one uh, big um, the dilemma, the, the single pitch dilemma, is basically if if they say to you, you are the only one and this is the budget and this is the idea, if you can't make that idea for that budget, then um yeah what what are you gonna do you know because then you're gonna turn in something with a higher budget and go like but we only have you and this was the budget and then so sometimes i actually say or or, or we say like uh can you please make it a pitch because we're gonna give you a really great idea or execution but it's gonna cost more money and then you have you know an alternative was, right. Did that answer the question or not? Yeah, I guess like it's also so the responsibility of the agency itself to kind of like teach clients to to uh, contribute to a more healthier pitching environment, right? Yeah, like it's a it's a mutual. Uh, the yeah. the the, wor the worst industry, uh, except advertising, is uh, the music <laughs> industry, mm -hmm. um, and that's that. Um, so maybe not not in the Netherlands. Well, there's no money for music videos here, so it's fucked anyway. But in the States, uh, so there's a new song by a new artist, and then basically they reach out to 10 or 15 or 25 directors, like, hey, do you want to make a music video for Drake or whatever? And people go like, oh, my God. And then, and then I literally think that the artist also has no idea, you know, like uh, it's not like back in the days where, you know, they would go like, oh, oh, uh, uh, want to do a music video with Anto Corbijn, and it's like a one-on-one -on -one relationship it's basically look at all these decks that i have here all these directors want to make these videos for you and you also never hear back uh, at all so it's it's so and i i really don't believe that you know a, a musical artist uh wants that you know that 25 directors are doing that for free no they're they're also creative so they know what it's like to not getting paid for stuff so yeah you but if you have, think, yeah but if you have a management or a label that basically creates that environment yeah. then you're also like uh, oh i get to choose great yeah yeah mm. thank you
All right, next question. Thank you. That sounds like it's a problem that it's a creative industry, but with a lot of money, and that just doesn't sort of yeah. fit. That's how I'm looking at it. Mm. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I have a question. <laughs> um, well, thank you, everybody. This is super interesting. Um, but there's a lot um, I'm talking about um, doing work for free, uh, unpaid labor. From, from the side of the agency there, but if also, well, I have a step also in the art world, but I also work creative agencies. And, and it's a problem that creative industry has, I think, a large. So, and it starts from, from the art world a lot, that there's a lot in there, right? And the funds are an amazing way to, to help artists, but there's also a lot of work to make the applications, right? So how can we, as a creative industry, let's say, ensure more social economic background differences like and diversity for artists? Because a lot of the times what happens is that it's only the people that can afford to spend time to do this work for free for applications or pitch to an agency to, to, to maybe get hired as a director and everything. And the people that just need to work to survive can't really get access. Is there something that's that's been done? Is that I don't want to put anybody on the spot, of course, but is it something we're thinking of? And yeah, how do you see that? It's it's for the whole panel, of course, but so I, yeah. I think the issue you're raising is super important um, and a uh, and reality for most of us. Um, I actually uh, met up with another Dutch fund yesterday to talk about um, like how can we make these funding applications um, more accessible. Um, so I also talk like um, a lot of my friends are artists, but they have two jobs uh, on the side. Um, and these applications take up a lot of time. So I proposed um, maybe they could uh, find a way to um, to do like shorter applications, uh, like two pages, um, and then uh, for the advisory committee to review them and then um, say to the to the applicant, um, like you can continue to write a full application or um, already decline and say, hey, this needs more work or more thinking. Um, so you wouldn't you wouldn't put like hours and days of work already into it, but just like an afternoon. Um, I think this could maybe be a way uh, to speed things up. But, yeah, but it's it's, it's yeah a it's a one. real issue. Well, that's how the Dutch film fund system works. And I think yeah. it's amazing. And uh, we're blessed that it exists. Realize that when you live in the Netherlands. But it is, you, you, do, you do turn in a first idea. And then if it gets greenlit, you get money to develop it. So you can write it. And then you get money to execute it. And it can also get killed at any, any stage. But nobody expects you to write a whole film script and then turn it in. So I think that that's, that's a really good idea. Yeah, that's amazing. And that could actually be a model that works for agencies and, and commercials and a fund. That, that, that does sound like a pretty good solution. I also know that some awards actually, like about, because pe creatives also apply to awards, right? Um, and I think it's also an issue there that people aren't able to apply because it costs money. I do. I think uh, awards are also handing out some free um, kind of free passes, um, which could also be a solution, I guess, um, in terms of um, opening up the industry and, and allowing, um, yeah, for it to be more inclusive. Um, I have room for one more question. No pressure. I would also love to add that there's um, um, a specific funding at the Manjan Fund called um, Gunsnaar Start. Um, and this allows people that graduated um, within four years um, uh, to apply for funding and then for a whole year they're supported so they can develop their practice. Um, so that gives people, it buys them time actually. And you actually uh, reviewed yeah, those, I'm part uh, of the applications, of right? The committee, yeah. yeah. It's, actually not, it's actually not a question, just a tip. Uh, sometimes I just call them and ask them if I can apply with two pages. 
and then ask them for feedback already and they do although it's not it should it should be like a real thing that you can do but if you just like call them it helps cool that's a great way to oh yeah. nice yeah, yeah i think that that you're right i think that you also like institutions can be very daunting you know but there are people working, working there, there <laughs> and and through linkedin etc you yeah. can really find who who it is and I, I i agree also on the awards you know like if you made uh um yeah if you if you made if you made something which there was no money involved etc I, re I really think that if you call most uh award shows or film funds and say like hey this is a passion project i made it myself i can't pay 600 euros or a thousand euros or 200 euros to send it in uh pe people will really look at it and maybe give you a wild card yeah all right um please give it up oh there's oh. one more question sorry no, i was just curious because it was like example like director was turned down like 24 times a year or something mm -hmm. like how do your directors live if they're not paid for um, idea development or they have enough already like other assignments or Maybe something encouraging. Well, I, I, I think it's. If, I think it's very. It, it is very hard to to get in, but if if you make it, you also do get paid really really well. So it's it's a little bit complicated maybe. But I also always say like, yeah, do other things to to make a living. So if you're also a good editor or something like, then then edit or, uh, but but yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, yeah. If you just want to live off directing, and you're just waiting for people to to give you that directing job. Yeah, that's that's probably uh, not a good idea. All right, one last question. <laughs> Hi. Just to jump on that, I was wondering, like all the agencies, the advertising agencies, they get pitch fees nowadays. They get money to put out their ideas and they are already big institutions. And then it feels kind of weird that the directors, the solo players, they don't get any fee within the pitch phase. How do you feel about that? Yeah, there, there is a lot of discussion about this. And uh, so if you, like I just explained how many people are involved, you would never get paid for all of that. So I do think that, for instance, saying that maybe there's a 2,000 euros per it just makes people more conscious because nowadays also I, I do think that advertising agencies sort of throw half-baked ideas into the world and then just hope that the directors will make it really nice and sometimes you even hear afterwards that the the client doesn't like the idea afterwards and you're like the client didn't see the idea before we started to pitch on it which is uh, crazy but it could be an incentive but i mean it's the same in uh uh, architecture, uh, you know, so many of these things, like even even if you do get paid for for pitching phase, so like the advertising agencies, they they will still invest a lot more because because they think, uh, yeah, it's free agencies pitching for this client. We do get a, a pitching fee, but we're gonna go like five, 50 times in mm -hmm. harder. Um, but now even like for smaller, budgets they ask these same things it's like a 20k budget make this whole movie already with your camera it's like wow yeah agreed. it's ridiculous <laughs> no i mean if you're if you have the balls to or sorry that's uh, uh, very modern to say nice but <laughs> sorry no but i mean if you if you have the guts to not to basically turn it down go for it yeah i did it yesterday it was felt great <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you. right. Um, thanks to this amazing panel, Monique, and May, Gijs. Please give it up to them. And thanks everyone for being here. All right. Have a great day.